which by the way, is one of my, my personal models in life is always beat yesterday, always do bigger deals than yesterday. And as a result of that, you're always going to not only, you know, hopefully have more profitability, but also you're just going to learn a lot more and you're going to be, you know, on that fringe of your comfort zone, which is where real personal development comes from. But you're also going to be around other players that are doing big deals. Right. And there's definitely power in pro, you know, there's power in proximity. You know, they say that your net work is your worth. And so that's been very valuable. You know, it's kind of a, a guiding principle in life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of None of Your Business Podcast. Sean and Lacey here. This is we are each and every week. And this week, we have a, well, just as always, we have a super, super special guest that I know is going to be very valuable mm -hmm. for all of our viewers and listeners because, you know, you know what a hot topic real estate investing can be right now. Um, but you know, we've talked very hot topic. <laughs> we've talked on this on this program about real estate investing, single family homes, multifamily homes. We've talked about self-storage. Um, but you know what the, the deal is is that we know that the audience is in large part service professionals, people that provide a service and that do quite well. Like we meet so many people that are doing well, but then the, that actually creates a problem. You have cash flow, you have money coming in more money you make, the more taxes you have to pay. And then you start to hear things. You're on social media and people are like, oh, you should be doing some real estate. But then that's kind of scary. What does that mean? How do I do it? I mean, I'm making my living as a dentist. I'm not trying to go around and develop real estate because that sounds like a lot of work. So what we did is we got a true expert to come and share with everybody here. Let's bring them in. Welcome Dave Allred onto the None of Your Business podcast. Welcome, Dave. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Thank you. Excited to have you. We always start off with this one question because we're going to get into some of the stuff that you're doing. It's big stuff. And if anybody has a computer, it's not that hard to find you at <laughs> axiapartners.com and you start looking at some of the things that you've got going on, your portfolio, and people are like, wow, I wish my parents had just gifted me a massive <laughs> real estate portfolio like they did to Mr. Allred over there. <laughs> but what we learn is that that's not always the case. And hearing people's story about how you became you, how did you end up on this podcast? That is super inspirational to so many people. So give us a brief glimpse into how you got here. You bet. Yeah. So definitely not anything given to me. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say that much. <laughs> Grew up in a very small town here in, in Utah, um, you know, very low income, blue collar home. I uh, didn't really have much to speak of growing up in terms of, you know, material things and, and, and you know, vacations and, and quality of life. Um, but when I was, was young, I remember made a commitment early on that I was going to do whatever it took to really get ahead in life. Right. And, and just to kind of change everything and reset the standard and and really just pay that price to be able to get ahead for me personally, as well as my future family. And so I was going to college and there's a recruiting booth set up, uh, recruiting college students to go out and knock doors in Chicago, Illinois, and selling home security systems door to door. And I knew it was going to be hard and it's definitely not something that I was aspiring to go and do. But uh, I knew I was going to learn a lot from that opportunity. And I saw it as an opportunity to get ahead financially. And so jumped into it, went out to Chicago, and it was frankly speaking the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life failed miserably for the first few weeks first few months um you know halfway through that summer selling season i was looking to quit you know every day and actually probably every hour i was thinking about quitting um but you know somebody came out and talked to me about how if i was able to you know sell 100 accounts i could become a sales manager the next year and that really inspired me to double down and to really you know refocus and finish strong because um, I saw an opportunity to become a leader and to help other people and to also, you know, make more, have more profitability. Anyway, so doubled down, finished summer really strong, uh, you know, made $31,000 that first summer. And for me, that was incredible. <laughs> you know, it was more than you know, my parents had ever made and, and uh, it was a game changer. 
And uh, to this day, I'd say that $31,000 is still the most important money that I've ever made. The next year I came back as a sales manager, um, had a really successful first year as a manager, uh, made $156,000. And I would say that was actually the second most important money I've ever made in my life because it really broke through that, those limiting belief systems I had growing up. You know, I think if you'd asked me early on in life, you know, like the best case scenario, you know, it'd be Dave making maybe a hundred grand a year in business, you know, so to be able to break through that, you know, really increase my, my, my paradigm and my perspective. And so next year came back, you know, made about a quarter million next year, half million. and just started this really incredible 17 year leadership career. And, uh, you know, both companies went public for multi-billion dollar valuations. And, you know, I really enjoyed that whole process. I uh, helped manage 121 sales teams across 41 states. But the entire time I was doing that, you know, I realized I didn't really want to be, you know, knocking doors or, or trading my time for money. And so I fell in love with real estate. And it actually started from a conversation with my CPA. And I said, hey, you know, what are your wealthy clients doing with their capital and to help mitigate, you know, tax liability? And he said, it's, you know, real estate and, and, and buying businesses. And so I decided to figure out this game of real estate. You know, we never talked about money, finances, investing, any of that, um, but just became a student of the game. And that was about 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, start aggressively putting that active income from selling into passive income streams through real estate. And uh, anyway, so that's kind of the, the background and how we got started. You know, definitely kind of the hard way, you know, out knocking doors, uh, definitely nothing given. Um, but, you know, frankly speaking, I'm actually really proud of that. And I, I think it's more rewarding now knowing that it was so hard and so difficult from the beginning. And that contrast is really beautiful. I want to go back to the 31,000 because I think that's a really important component of the story because you said there were so many times like you wanted to quit, you wanted to quit, you wanted to quit, but then you decided to double down. Like what inside of you or what what do you think it was for you that didn't allow yourself to quit in those moments? Because we meet a lot of people that in really hard times when they're trying to break through, like, like you said, all these limiting beliefs, that mindset, their understanding of how to work, that work ethic that they 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 viewed in their world, it's so easy to just slow down and stop or quit when when they're they can't feel where they can go. So, what do you think that was for you? That's a, such a good question because I've been trying to pinpoint that because I've got four children. I want to be able to teach that to my my kids as well. You know, right. I, I think that the honest answer is our childhood. You know, it was really hard. I, I ran away when I was seventeen. Uh, my sister, when she was fifteen, uh, lived in this crappy little house with the, the roof falling in and and and, and uh, cockroaches and literally living off of ramen noodles and, and, and baked beans. <laughs> it's like it was it was very, very humble beginnings. And, you know, my brother decided to be emancipated when he was 17, moved in with me as well. And and so just kind of going through all that, it was just this 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 real commitment that I was going to do whatever it took to get ahead. And actually, in my bedroom as a teenager, I had a, a poster of Jerry Rice, one of my favorite athletes. At the bottom of the poster, it had a quote from Jerry Rice, and it says, you know, today I will do what others won't so that tomorrow I can have what others can't. And I think that really just became, you know, kind of a guiding principle for me in my life. And it still is today. You know, I think that when we're willing to, you know, learn to become comfortable being uncomfortable is a very valuable skill. And, and the whole concept of delayed gratification is so undervalued in today's society you know it's called law of the harvest you know call it delayed gratification but you know you've got you know i realized early on sometimes you don't see the reward immediately and you've got to you know plant the seed and then you know fertilize it and, and really put the work in before you actually see the the upside or the the production come in and so you know i think it was that mixed with you know my 80 percent of my sales team quit that summer, my roommate actually got, he was out knocking doors and somebody sniped him with a 22 caliber rifle and shot him in the, in the calf muscle. Oh and just ran, I know ran, Chicago, right. But randomly oh. shot him in the leg. And so half the team quits. We're down to like five guys left in the office. And so, I mean, it was, it, like I said, it was the, the most challenging thing I'd ever done in my life. Cause I always been yeah. pretty successful when I committed to something and, and um, was failing miserably. But 
I think it was a mix of just that childhood and that commitment mixed with, you know, realizing that I was learning a lot of really good life skills from mm -hmm. door to door sales, you know, the psychology, the interpersonal communication, the discipline, the grind, the mental fortitude, the tenacity, you know, dealing with rejections, overcoming, of, you know, understand the sales process, just salesmanship in general, leadership. Those are all skills that I really do feel like I knew that they would add value for me later in life. And frankly speaking, they've been a game changer, even in real estate today, you know, running a fund, you know, a lot of those same skill sets come into play when you're negotiating on a, on a, on, on, on buying an apartment complex or, you know, closing on an RV park. Well, let's uh, jump to real estate. So you um, had the problem that a lot of our viewers and listeners may be facing themselves where, you know, you were, were at 125 and 250 and 500 and you start making all this money and then you go to the CPA and you're like, what am I, what do I do? Because a lot of cash flow causes some problems. You got a lot of money and you're paying a lot of tax. You know intrinsically because you see social media that you should be investing, but you don't know what to invest in. If you watch the commercials, they say silver and gold. I see that commercial a lot. Um, you see, you talk to your friends, they talk about <laughs> um, the housing market. Tell us how you got into real estate. Like what, how did, how did you make this transition? You're killing it in sales. Now look at where you're at in real estate. Yeah, so I don't have time to go through the whole story, but I'll try to condense it into a short version. Um, you know, it was, at first it was just buying one townhome and it was uh, about a hundred thousand dollar purchase. Uh, it was all my savings that kind of went all in on, on that one property. Um, you know, fast forward two years, it actually got up in value a ton. It was almost worth 200,000. So I actually sold that in 1031 exchange, which means that you, you know, you defer taxes and you take the proceeds into a like kind property. And so that one single townhome went into a fourplex with no additional cash out of pocket, right? Because the equity appreciation was able to be applied as the down payment. And three years later, that fourplex I bought for half a million is worth a million dollars. The market's been incredible, right? And so then I took that million dollar asset, 1031 exchange that into three new fourplexes with no cash out of pocket. Again, all that equity, I call it the velocity of the money, right? And so it's leveraging that equity to continue to always do bigger deals than yesterday, which by the way, is one of my, my personal models in life is always beat yesterday, always do bigger deals than yesterday. And as a result of that, you're always going to not only, you know, hopefully have more profitability, but also you're just going to learn a lot more and you're going to be, you know, on that fringe of your comfort zone, which is where real personal development comes from. But you're also going to be around other players that are doing big deals, right? And there's definitely power in proc, you know, there's power in proximity. You know, they say that your net work is your net worth. And so that's been very valuable. You know, it's kind of a, a guiding principle in life. But you know, so then those four plexes be became worth more, and then I have 1031 exchange into a 20 plex or into a 200 unit apartment complex. And so really just paying attention to that uh, that equity through 1031 exchanges. Um, you know, long story short, I went from one door to 66 doors. Uh, and, and by the way, I was, I was doing other deals right on the side with, with, with new income, new active income coming in. But that one first property I bought in 2010, I've been able to parlay that into 66 units with no additional cash out of pocket simply by paying attention to the equity in those properties. So I th looking at some of the stuff that you do and <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Yeah, great job. We're, we're, all, we, we're all stunned back here for a moment. <laughs> I we're, think you stunned James. Even James, our producer, James, is James like jaw dropped, wow. and then he, he, didn't, he couldn't bring us back. <laughs> <laughs> One door to sixty six doors without any out of out of pocket cash is very impressive. Yeah, it's and actually, maybe if I could just share a little more on that would be yeah. So you know, and I'm also buying more fourplexes and doing some you know multifamily and. You know, the progression was going from townhomes, you know, to fourplexes. And I love fourplexes. I think I've purchased 27 fourplexes now. And, huh. you know, and then going into 20, a 20 plex and then a 62 unit and then 120 and you know, all the way up to 430 units. And so it's just been this progression of always looking for bigger and bigger deals. And um, but you get to a point where, you know, you can't you don't have the personal capital to be able to continue to do that at scale. And so, when, you know, when I learned about syndications, which is basically the ability to use other people's money along with my own money to be able to go and do some of these bigger deals, that's where things really accelerated for me. 
because then I'm creating value for my friends, right? People I care about by removing those barrier of entries to allow them to come into these huge, you know, 20, $30 million plus deals. And it's such a beautiful thing where I'm creating value for, you know, now, you know, about 400 investors. Um, and, you know, but it also helps me and it helps the communities. It helps the, uh, the apartment, you know, could we go and do these value add improvements to the assets? But anyway, so once I, I understood how to, you know, leverage and, and, and utilize other people's money for these deals called syndications, that's where things really sped up for me. So about a dozen syndications and, and those went very, very well. You know, I'm really proud to say, say that I've never lost a single dollar of investor capital across all of our deals in real estate. Um, but then the next step for me was the fu a fund, right? So it went from, you know, single family to fourplexes to, to small multifamily to large syndications. And the next step in that progression is a real estate fund. So we launched our fund about two years ago and, you know, we can circle back more on that, but uh, that's been the, the progression. Yeah, and I know you talk a lot about this idea of experiential investing. So can you tell us a little bit more about like what that is and why you moved into that specifically? I would love to. I believe that experiences are the new economy sure. and that applies across the board. You know, whether you are a medical professional, a doctor, a chiropractor, whether you are a, a serial entrepreneur, you know, whatever it looks like, everybody wants experiences now, whether it's millennials, baby boomers, and they're willing to pay a premium for those experiences. And so I realized that a long time ago. And so everything that I'm doing is experiential. Um, you know, I'm helping bring in a top golf, golf entertainment facility right here in our backyard in Utah County. You know, it's been a five year uh, project and it, you know, it's been so much work, but talk about experiences for the community. That's, that's gonna be incredible. Um, you know, the restaurants, I've got over 60 restaurants that I have ownership in and they're all very, very experiential. Um, you know, with Axia, our real estate fund, if you go to our website on the home page, the first thing it says is experiential investing. And I've never seen another firm do this. I feel like it's kind of a um, competitive advantage, if you will, or a unique value proposition. And so we, we not only, you know, make sure we get a strong ROI return on investment, for our partners, but we're also committed to creating an ROE, a return on experience or a return on education. And so we do a lot with that. Every month we have a webinar, it's called an experiential webinar. And we have the top real estate guys in the country coming on talking for 45 minutes and just teaching our investors. And then a 30 minute Q and A session. Also, every time we, we close on a, a new asset, we have a webinar and we show our investors exactly how we found the deal, our model, how we source the debt, you know, the entire, basically pull back the curtain and say, hey, this is exactly how we do what we do. And it's been received really well. Um, you know, I think that I, I've always been somebody that really focuses on creating value. Um, my all time favorite quote is Zig Ziglar. And he says, you can have everything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And so when we created Axia, the word Axia is actually Greek for to create value. And so it's just really a, a commitment that we have. And, you know, it's one thing that I really miss, you know, in my door-to-door -door sales experience with 121 sales teams, it was really about development and helping these guys to grow and to become better leaders and better people, you know, to win a life. And I missed that when I came into real estate. And so that's why I created that experiential um, investing is because it's not just about making more money together, but it's a much more holistic kind of dynamic approach. And it's been awesome. Honestly, it's been really, really fun to be able to create those experiences. I often say that who you do business with is who you do life with naturally. And mm -hmm. so when you have your partners coming in, you know, just like with you guys, Sean and Lacey, you know, we're partners now and, you know, going on two different deals and, how fun is that where we're creating, you know, I'm on your podcast now, we're just creating value and that value reciprocates. Absolutely. I, I want to jump a little bit back in your story because you said you first created a syndicate. You found out about the power of creating a syndicate and then subsequently you created a fund. For our listeners, what is the difference and why why did you choose one over the other? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. So the main, the, the, the simple answer is, a syndication is one address. So it's one apartment complex and every investor knows exactly what they're investing in. You know, they can see it, they can visualize it and it's very, it's deal specific. 
Um, but on the flip side, you usually have, you know, five to maybe 30 people in a syndication and on a fund, it's, it's a whole, it's a basket of different assets. And so, for example, with our fund right now, you know, we'll have about approximately six apartment complexes, you know, two to three industrial warehouse parks, two to three uh, self storage assets and two to three RV parks across multiple states. And so that creates geographical and asset diversification. Right. And so so the reason why I went to uh, the fund model is really just because I, I saw a statistic. It's very important. And it says that in the United States, a real estate fund has two point seven times less risk than investing in a individual asset, mainly just because of the, that diversification that we just talked about. And so if I have, you know, all hundreds of investors, and by the way, all my investors are my friends. It's my social network. You know, I've never paid for a lead or marketing. It's just, it's very organic. And so in the spirit of protecting my investors' interests, I feel like the fund is a much better, especially when we're 13, 14 years into this incredible housing market, this housing cycle, uh, it just really mitigates the downside risk. I learned a long time ago, uh, Sean, that I, I hate losing more than I love winning and I love winning, but I hate losing. And so, you know, especially when it's your people you care about, they're investing their capital with you as a fiduciary. And so that that's really the main reason why I made that pivot. Um, but also because on a fund, you can bring in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of investors and create real value at scale. Whereas on a syndication, it's usually a little bit smaller. And then one more, one more big benefit on the fund is, um, you know, we go into a very competitive negotiation on on some of these commercial real estate assets and we go and we say hey we are a fund we're fully capitalized we have all our our money to close in our bank account right now mm -hmm. that's powerful man and it's so competitive right now that goes a long way whereas on a syndication you have to get the deal under contract then you go to your investors mm -hmm. and have to raise the capital which frankly speaking can be pretty stressful mm -hmm. So I would imagine on a fund, people are looking for two things. They're looking for uh, three. Th three. Well, they want money. Yeah, they want an ROI. They yeah, want an ROE. Their, an ROE. Well, four maybe then. <laughs> okay. They want their, their risk diluted, right? And then they probably are also looking for some sort of tax benefits. And so let's just say that I am completely new. I'm a newbie. I know nothing about this. Is there a, an advantage for me to be able to also put money in the fund when it comes to my taxes? Such a good, such a smart question. Um, I'm going to start by saying I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax advisor. So <laughs> there's my disclaimer. With that being said, I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even proud of this, but I've read six or seven tax books, the whole thing front to back. The oh, most you boring should be proud read. of that. I kind <laughs> of am, but it's, it's not the coolest <laughs> thing to be like. Great at <laughs> tax code. But, uh, but, 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 you know, it is such a powerful part of real estate. And I think it's something that's very underappreciated or maybe misunderstood with just how, mm -hmm. how, how powerful the tax benefits are through real estate, um, you know, especially for high income earners. And especially for like a lot of my, my neighbors in my neighborhood are, are doctors, medical experts, medical specialists. And a lot of them are investing with us because they're able to invest and be completely passive. So there's no ongoing, you know, active requirement of their time, their bandwidth. They don't have to guarantee any of the debt and they get 100% of the tax benefits that flow back to them from the fund. And then also um, they can really focus on their core competence and where they're making the, their income. Right. And I've always been a big fan. Like, you know, if you're a, a doctor or, you know, just a high income earner, you really, you know, usually should just really focus on making more income because that's your highest and best use of your time and try to find passive investments with great operators where, you know, they're going to take care of your capital versus trying to specialize in multiple different things. And, and so I think that's actually a really important point is when you get started in real estate is making a definitive decision. If you want to be a passive investor or an active mm -hmm. investor, right? Cause right. most people want to be passive, but they end up being more active changing you know, changing toilet seats or, uh, you know, screening tenants or evictions and just dealing with with even just managing the property management company can take time. And so I think that's just a, you know, a little nugget there is from the beginning is determine, make that decision up front if you want to be active or passive. Um, you know, but with the fund, going back to your question, Lacey, 
we've made a decision as a, as a group that we are passing 100% of the tax benefits from the entire real estate portfolio to our investors. So for me and my team, we don't take any of the, any of that tax benefit. We give it all to our partners and that's very much not the norm. Um, you know, but we're relatively young as an investment firm and our ambitions are to be a multiple multi-billion dollar investment firm in the next few years. And so it's all about putting our investors first and making sure we get them the best returns and the best treatment um, so that we can, you know, in return, have them as repeat investors long term. Um, so but to get a little more technical, what we do is every time we close on an, on an asset, uh, as soon as we can, we do what's called a cost segregation study. And what that does is it, it accelerates the depreciation benefit in the first few years. And so we can take a, a, a huge amount of depreciation losses in the first year. And, uh, and then that gets all passed down to our partners, 100%. So at the end of each year, you get a K-1 and it shows you, you know, your income and then also your losses. And what's interesting is like on our last fund is an example, you know, let's say somebody came in for a million dollars on that K-1, their first year, it showed a $600,000 loss, right? Even though there weren't any real losses, that's just, it's depreciation. And it's right. such an incredible tool if we can know how to use this. Now, if you're a real estate professional, which is just a, it's a, on your tax return, it's a little checkbox. If you qualify, it's basically 750 hours per year that you uh, focus on real estate. Then what you're able to do is, is take all those losses and offset your active income. So for example, for me, I can take depreciation offset a hundred percent of my income across the board, whether that's from stocks, from real estate, from my job, all of it. Okay. Now, if you're not a real estate professional with 750 hours per year, then you are limited with some of those deductions. You can only offset, you know, other passive income and whatnot, but those tax benefits do carry forward if you don't utilize them that year. So that was a very short answer. And actually one more thing to share with your, your listener base, a lot of my neighbors, um, you know, let's say that the, the husband is, you know, the main bread earner, he's a doctor, he's making say a million bucks a year, millions a year. Um, his wife, if she qualifies as the real estate professional then, and they file their taxes jointly, then they can still use all that depreciation to offset the, the, the doctor's high income and literally pay, right. I know a lot of these are paying literally zero dollars in taxes because of that depreciation offset. So sorry, Lacey, that was a lot. And hopefully that was- No, that was that great. Was That's what I was looking for. Yeah, and so as you mentioned earlier, um, Lacey and I are, are um, in several of these deals, as are many of our clients, which is why we wanted to increase your exposure through the podcast and have a lot more people understand the opportunity. Right. Um, I know, um, I know your heart. I know you as a person that you're not here to sell, but here's what's going to happen. So I'm, I'm asking you to do this as a favor to Lacey and I, because now once the podcast airs, everybody's going to message us and say, how do we get involved with Dave Allred? So just so that we don't have to answer it. <laughs> why don't you? <laughs> why don't you tell them how they can get yeah. involved with Dave Allred? You bet. Yeah. So I'm very active on social media. So Instagram or, you know, Facebook, my, my kids keep telling me that like Facebook's only for old people, but I don't know. I think it's still pretty cool, but yeah, Instagram <laughs> or Facebook, I'm pretty active on there. Should be pretty easy to find. It's just Dave Allred. Um, our website is axiapartners.com. My email is Dave at axiapartners.com. Uh, Axi is spelled A X I A. But, uh, yeah. And then, you know, Sean and Lacey have my personal cell phone number. I'm always happy to jump on a phone call and answer any questions. Um, yeah, those are probably the easiest ways to, to get a hold of me. Yeah, I would love to see people explore this. I can't tell you how many of our clients mm -hmm. um, are super happy to be um, invested with Axio Partners. Um, and you are right. This whole idea of experiential investing um, it's, it's not a thing. It's only a thing in Axia. I mean, I'm sure people are going to start to copy it, of, yeah, course, of course, but right now, like if you want to actually not just write a check and then cross your fingers and hope you see your money again, um, you can plug in and like, they hold your hand, they walk you through, like, as if, as like if you, you were said, helping to make the decision, the curtain, so you can see behind the curtain. It's a learning opportunity. And you know what that also you know, means. It, that it, it's almost like, it's almost, sorry. It's almost like a, it's basically like a mastermind. It's a, it's a free 
real estate mastermind is exclusive for our family, our, our, our partners. Right. Wow. And again, it's been so fun to do that, man. And be able to have guys like Sean, I'd love to have you come on as well as a guest, you know, and, and be able to help create value for our community. And it's been, it's been really, really incredible. And, and I want to share one more thing on that note, which is yeah. for me, like at my core, what I realized maybe 15 years ago was what really fires me up the most is freedom. It's, it's the pursuit of having as much freedom as I can have in my life. And it's freedom to be able to do whatever I want to be doing with the people I want to be doing it with when I want to be doing that, you know, and I've got a family of six and, you know, it's not just the financial freedom, but it's the time freedom. And to me, that's really the beauty of, of real estate, uh, passive real estate is, you know, to be able to really create generational wealth through these commercial assets and knowing you've got that mailbox money coming in consistently every single month, no matter what you're doing, where you are. And, uh, you know, if we had more time, I'd share with you guys what I'm doing with my, my family, my kids and, and their real estate. And, you know, it's been so fun to now kind of teach this to the next generation because, you know, a lot of times people ask, like, Dave, what's your definition of, you know, success? And I always talk about impact. But the more I've thought about it recently, really how I define, you know, my, my impact or my legacy is going to be the impact that my children make in this world. Right. And but anyway, that's kind of a tangent for another day, but uh, I just want to say freedom for me really, really has been a powerful motivator. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for realizing that, you know, so long ago and being able to just put together a, a clear blueprint on how is going to create that freedom in my life. And I think that intentionality is really, really valuable. And, you know, Sean, Lacey, if I come back on in the future, I'd love to talk more about, you know, just, you know, like lifestyle design and, and the intentionality and reverse engineering your investments yeah. to make sure they're lined up with what I call lifestyle investing, where you're really investing to to curate the lifestyle of your dreams. Love that. Let's definitely have yes. that discussion in the People future. Will love along that. with that, we gotta crack that self-directed IRA secrets down for all of our <laughs> all of our That's viewers also another, as well. another let's, show. Let's yeah. do that. Um, Dave, you, you've been an amazing guest and I know that everybody has found tremendous value. Um, I hope that if you're listening and you found value that you will connect with him, uh, the education that you will receive, not to mention your return on your dollars, right. but your return on just your effort, your participation, um, it will absolutely blow your mind. You're going to learn so much. You're going to meet so many people. You're going to be exposed to a lot of um, new people and new ideas. Um, and listen, I've seen a lot of funds in my time and um, there's none like Axia Partners. So check him out. Dave, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, Sean. Love you guys. Appreciate the opportunity and have a great day. Thank All right, you. everybody. We'll be back again next week with a brand new edition of the None of Your Business podcast. Oh,